गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स यू आर मोस्ट वेलकम टू सिविल अफेयर्स चैनल टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस सोशल एंथ्रोपोलॉजी बाय मान इग्नू हियर वी विल डिस्कस कंपेरेटिव एथनोग्राफी सोशल स्टेटिफिकेशन हियर अवर टॉपिक इज कास्ट लेट इज बिगिन द टॉपिक इंट्रोडक्शन पार्ट साइलेंट फीचर ऑफ द कास्ट सिस्टम थियोडिकल पार्ट ऑफ विच द एथनोग्राफी कास्ट इन द इकोनॉमिक फ्रंटियर आविलेज इन हाई लैंड उड़ीसा इज एन एग्जाम्पल description of the ethnography intellectual context field work analysis of data and conclusion how does the ethnography advance our understanding theoretical part of which the ethnography patronage and exploitation changing agrarian relations in south gujarat india is an example description of the ethnography intellectual context field work analysis of data and conclusion how does the ethnography advance our understanding at the last we will discuss the summary learning objectives are after going through this unit you will be able to get a general idea of caste and its features form an idea about caste studies in india and elsewhere get an idea about the contents of the two monographs and compare the two monographs and relate the findings to other similar studies let us begin the introduction part caste are corporate social units which are ranked and generally defined by decent marriage and occupation this however does not imply that caste folks are kins person in fact caste and kinship are distinguished in terms of their respective defining properties caste members are related because they share the same status that is position with respect to their other such units with respect to other such units they may share the same history of origin but the emphasis is laid on its status vis-a-vis -vis the other rather than the fact of sharing the same biogenetic substances or what is called blood which is central to defining kinship the term caste is derived from casta meaning kind type species lineage race or clan and was used by portuguese traders to describe the people they met on the west coast of india when they arrived there in the in the 16th and 17th centuries same or smith 1986 the equivalent word for caste is jati in many indian languages which is an endogamous hereditary social group that has a name and a combination of attributes all members of a jati are expected to act according to their jati attributes and each member shares his jati's status in the social hierarchy of a village locality in india mandelbaum 1972 caste derives sanction from hinduism salient feature of caste system hierarchy the essence of caste lies in its hierarchical arrangement of hereditary groups the general idea of the hierarchy is that the category of priestly caste always remain at the top and those who are scavengers in occupations that defile are at the bottom generally the two opposite ends of the hierarchy are relatively fixed there is considerable flexibility in between especially in the middle regions where there are contesting claims about respective caste positions for example in kelra nambutris consider themselves superior to tamil brahmins and among the nambutris those who have a hereditary right to study the vedas claim superiority over the others again there are very low groups among the brahmins like the marka brahmins of mysur from whom even the harijans will not accept cooked food or water sri nivas 1991 or those brahmins who perform death rituals occupational association there is a definite relationship between caste and profession a caste is not only associated with an occupation but enjoys considerable monopoly over it agriculture was traditionally a common occupation for all all castes 
it was called kashvi occupation thus a kumhar that is potter may be an agriculturist during the monsoons and a trader in grain for a brief period after the harvest restriction on food drink and smoking generally it is not only the people in the in a caste society who are divided into higher and lower groups but also the food they eat the dress and ornaments they wear and the customs and manners they practice every practice or institution is ranked in india's dietic hierarchy the highest caste are usually vegetarian and teetotalers the highest vegetarian caste avoid chicken pork and beef and ever liquor pollution the concept of pollution plays a very important role in maintaining the required distance between different caste in south india the rules of pollutions were more elaborate than in north india in kerala a nayadi had to maintain 22 meter distance from the nambu tree and 13 meter from the tian who himself maintained a 10 meter distance from nambu tree srivna srinivas 1991 ritual and other privileges and disabilities generally members of lower caste are not allowed to take over the customs and rituals of higher caste only the two or twice born caste are entitled to study the vedas and perform rituals according to sanskritic text reflection generally the brahmins the kshatriya and the vaishya are the three caste which alone are entitled to undergo the sacred thread upnayan ceremony which constitutes spiritual rebirth these three caste are called twice born ethnographic studies on caste ethnography generally implies first hand study of a small community or ethnic group it combines both descriptive and analytical element to a varying degree however the central characteristics of conventional ethnographies is that they focus on one specific culture or society and consider theoretical or comparative generalizations from its standpoint two kinds of research were stimulated by the early british or western encounter with indian caste system the indologist is scanned through the sacred literature of hindus and brought into relief the elements of the varna model the other group consisting of administrators was concerned with caste in terms of its distribution in space and as description of social and cultural diversity during the first three decades of the 20th century a few ethnographic monograph on individual caste and sects were published g w bricks on the chamar in 1920 and a toothy on the vaishnavas of gujarat in 1935 wh wiser's study of the hindu jajmani system 1935 deals with a detailed quantitative account of occupational specialization and patron client reciprocity among the various castes in a particular north indian village among the pioneer scholars of the 19th and 20, early 20th century mention may be made of karl marx stability of caste system on the basis of the asiatic mode of production h j s main caste as an example of non contractual status society e senart caste as a system of stratification based on purity of descent and purity of occupation max weber c bogle am hokart etc indian scholars like jn bhattacharya's hindu caste and sex 1896 la k ayers the cochin tribe and caste 1909 to 1912 gh de size gh de size a glossary of caste tribes and races in the baroda state 1912 and ayer and nanjun dhaiya nanjun dhaiya the mysore tribe and caste 1928 to 1935 gs gurey's caste and race in india 1928 to 1935 these are the books 
In 1949, N.K. Bose published a Bengali book entitled Hindu Samajer Gadan, Hindu Samajer Gadan, a structure of the Hindu society, which deals with certain fundamental functional issues of caste. One of the first attempts to study the caste organization of a region as a functioning system was made by M. N. Srinivas. in his book religion and society among the cooks of the south india 1952 between 1950 and 1955 the focus of caste studies changed from speculations regarding its origin to the intensive studies of the functioning of caste in the context of local communities the year 1955 marks the publication of india's villages m n srinivas ed villages india village india m marriott ed and indian village sc dubey fg bales 1963 has made a comprehensive study of the pattern of political participation of the people of odisha at the village constituency and state level in the 1957 general election the role of caste and caste association in politics received detailed attention in this monograph om levis 1958 has written on the interrelationship between lineage faction and politics in a north indian village jain brahman jain brahman 1979 in his patronage and exploitation wrote on the changing agrarian relations in south gujarat in 1994 he made a restudy of the same in his work beyond patronage and exploitation M N Srinivas a concept M N Srinivas concept of dominant caste 1959 has been widely used in the study of power relations at the village level the jajmani type of economic interrelationship between the various caste has received considerable attention mention may be made of T Beadleman 1959 E Harper 1959 M Orans 1968 H Gold 1960 H Orenstein 1962 O Lewis and V Barnau 1956 Morris 1960 Lambert 1965 Gardigal 1959 Milton Singer 1968 and others have paid some attention to the relevance of the caste in the study of labor commitment and business and industrial enterprise F G Bellez's famous work on caste and the economic front year 1957 deals with the study of changes in the local caste system generated by transferability of land in the money market right from the very beginning western scholars were attracted to indian caste system as a unique system of social purity and pollution according to max weber 1958 caste essentially belong to the order of status stratification and this weberian concept was used by andre bitale 1965 in his study of social stratification in a tanjore village the most comprehensive treatise on the problem of hierarchy in the caste system is l jomont's monograph homo hierarchicus homo hierarchicus SI Sir Le System Des Cast 1966 he builds up an ideal construct of hierarchical model of indian civilization in opposition to equalitarian model of western civilization unlike western tradition dumont feels indian tradition distinguishes absolutely between hierarchical status and power considerable work has been done in the field of caste mobility in recent years main contributions in this field were made by srinivas rove and damle iravati carways 1953 kinship organization in india is perhaps the most systematic study on caste as an arrangement of unilineal descent groups d pocock 1957 deals with the operation of inclusion and exclusion principles in his study of the caste system of central gujarat a mayers 
1960 monograph cash and kinship in the central india deals with the relationship between extension of kinship ties sub caste and religion and region sub caste and region in m marriott 1960 caste ranking and community structure in five regions of india and pakistan the concept of elaboration in ranking is based on a notion of demographic factors of ethnic diversity in social ecology there are very few studies of caste in the urban setting however elin de ross work 1961 on the hindu family in its urban setting om lynch om lynch 1969 on the politics of untouchability in the city of agra nk bose calcutta a uh, social survey 1965 are some of the important works among the important contributions towards the study of caste among non hindus mention may be made of n k bose 1949 to 1951 r gupta 1956 g ansari 1960 z ahmed 1962 ip singh 1958 and others in aspect of caste in south india Ceylon and Northwest Pakistan E R Leech 1960 caste has been reviewed among non hindus beyond india N K Bose Srinivas Robert Redfield Iravati Karve and others concentrated on the study of caste as local system Bale 1960 61 presents a systematic interact interactional model for reconsidering the position of the tribe vis-a-vis cast as two ideal poles in a linear continuum whereas the tribe is typically organized on the basis of segmentary solidarity the caste system is based on organic solidarity similarly examinations were made by sinha on the ethnographic material from barabhum barabhum and bastar and hn banerjee 1969 among the kora of barabhum Obara Bhum, G. P. Steeds, 1955, article on personality formation in a Gujarat village initiated a number of studies. Car Steers, 1957, and M. Leg, and Hitchcock, 1966, on the impact of caste system on the formation of personality. Sri Nivas, 1966, social change in modern India. Yogendra Singh 2002 Modernization of Indian Tradition Mandelbaum 1972 Society in India Kuppu Swami 1972 Social Change in India and others have contributed towards analysis of Indian society with reference to caste in recent times activity try to separate the ethnographic work of Indian anthropologists from the rest and arrange them chronologically Our main heading is theoretical part of which the ethnography cast in the economic frontier a village in highland odisha is an example fg bale's book on bisipara is a significant contribution to the understanding of the relationship between caste and land in traditional india land was not a marketable commodity it was inherited from the ancestors or it was colonized or it was received as a gift in this odisha village bales describes a situation where land comes to the market it is sold by the upper caste and acquired by the lower this book contributes to the understanding of the dynamism of the caste system description of the ethnography intellectual context this book describes a village known as bisipara in the remote hills of western odisha in the region which has been and still is a frontier this region is called the kondmals this book seeks to analyze the changes that have come about in the internal organizations of this village as a result of the extension of the economic and administrative frontier bale's present study is concerned with the study of this village in phulbani district in odisha of the eastern part of india in the eastern part of the india he was concerned with the changes in the social structure of bisipara as a result of the penetration of the mercantile mercantile 
penetration of the mercantile economy brought about the British rule in India. In fact, he has succeeded in describing the changes which have been brought about in the structure of Bisipara society over a hundred years of British rule. Fieldwork, Ballet's study reflects the fact that he is studying the microcosm along with the macrocosm. He is aware that he is not studying a widowless monad, to use Srinivas's word, who contributed a foreword to his book, to his book, but something that has been all the time exposed to the influences emanating from the larger society. Bailey conducted a lengthy field work in Bisipara, employing the techniques of participant observation and interview, analysis of data. The book contains 12 chapters and is divided into three parts. The history and present composition of the village is set out in the first part of the book. The second part deals with the acquisition of wealth and the transfer of land in the village. It describes the way in which land comes into the market and how the new mercantile economy operates. The service and trading along with the salaries, investment and management are dealt with in the economic history of the village. The third part gives an outline of the change in the village political organization and the role of caste in the new ceremony. Ballet begins by describing the economy of the peasant of Bisipara. He has used the word caste not in the sense of the four categories of Hinduism Varna but to translate the Uriya word Jati which is an endogamous group dispersed over several villages. The Kund Mals are inhabited by aboriginal people called Kunds. The configuration of the Kund Mals serves as a barrier to travel both into and within the region and at the same time limits the amount of cultivable land which could otherwise attract settlers. As a result of immigration from Bode in the north by the Uriya colonists, the best cultivating sites were occupied by them. Thus, the distribution of land between the two groups in the Kondmals changed, but the region continued its political and economic isolation from the plains, both from the Ganjam plains to the south and from Bode in the north, which was relatively isolated from the rest of India. The region was open to trade and administration by the East India Company after 1803. Bisipara was colonized by the Uriyas. They are Hindu, divided into Indogamous caste. These castes were warrior, board Brahmin, barber, washerman, herdsman, board distiller, and board outcast. They together formed an agricultural community. Another caste coned potters was added in the late 18th or early 19th century. The arrival of the new administration brought the village within the ambit of the larger economy of India. And from this time, a new process of change began. The method by which the village as a whole exploited the material world altered. The traditional economy rested on agriculture. Though wealth was largely derived from the land, this was no longer the only source. There were also the profits of trading and the work on behalf of the administration. The economy is now no longer agricultural but also mercantile. The new economy led to the acquisition of wealth by other means which led to the fragmentation of joint families. Constant partitioning reduced the size of the estate until some of them were sold out. Those who made profits in the new economy purchased at the land. In this way, both newcomers and the old have profited, but a tendency was noticed among the warrior caste group who formally monopolized the land to lose property in favor of the other caste, particularly the two groups of distillers and more recently the board outcast. Reflection Peasants are a class of primary producers within a society and they are characterized by 
the presence of social classes and state formation. Before 1855, the village consisted a group of consisted of a group of joint families of warrior caste who owned the land, and their attended and their attendant service caste. Before 1855, the village consisted of a group of joint families of warrior caste who owned the land and their attendant service caste. Since 1859, there has developed an extensive trade in primary products, particularly turmeric and mahua, and the demand for such items as machine cloth, kerosene, tea, sugar, and so on. Until 1920, there was a very profitable trade in alcoholic drink. as wealth was accumulated through these mercantile sources it was invested in land since the environment sets a limit on the amount of land that can be brought under cultivation and this limit was reached before 1850 someone had to lose land in the kondmals land came into the market through the combined action of the system of inheritance and the pattern of consumption enjoyed enjoyed at certain crises of life the amount of land that comes into the market is the result of many factors a good or a bad harvest the length of time between the crises afflicted land owners their possession of other forms of capital their chances of getting help from kin person their incomes from sources other than land and the size of estate of course there are other ways in which land enters the market spectacular spectacular dune has come to a few rich men through legitimation through litigation or speculation or ritual misfortune spectacular dune has come to a few rich men through litigation or speculation or ritual misfortune but these are exceptional events the common process is subdivision of land at inheritance the reduction in size is of estate to the point where unless fields are sold they cannot meet the cost of those crises which occur in everyone's lifetime the expenses made to meet the crises are called contingent and there was no way of meeting these expenses except by selling of the land land which was earlier not a marketable commodity becomes so those original settlers who profited from the new economic opportunities acquired very large estates which they were able to manage because the old system of master client was replaced by a casual temporary and a purely economic wage relationship some men of the warrior caste group have profited from the new economic opportunities and consolidated and improved their position as landed proprietors men of many other castes have acquired small estates but the biggest gains went to the distiller caste group who profited from the monopoly arising out of the caste beliefs and government support the trend has stopped about 1910 and since then land in increasing quantities has been going to the board outcast the redistribution of land has modified the political structure of the village at the same time the village was inducted into the larger political system represented by the administration the structure of the caste groups within bisipara was underwritten by differential control of productive resources which amounted to the control of the village land but the economy in which ganjam distillers operate is wider than this it covers a field in which caste is irrelevant and in which the juridical authority rests with the government there is no need for them to seek accommodation within the local structure of caste groups the combined pressure of economic progress and barriers of untouchability have forced the board outcast to become citizen of the administration 
rather than the village hence the entry of the traders frontier is modifying the structure of the caste group in bisipara caste itself is unimpaired even the ganjam distillers and the board outcaste believe in caste and observe the rules of endogamy and interdyne the solidarity of caste groups has not decreased in any way but there is a fundamental change in the local structure the politico economic functions is gradually weakening the new economy is widespread thus untouchability and localization are the two barriers of new economy in recent times the political functions of caste in bisipara are gradually taken over by the ultimate authority the government of india as a result of pressure of economic change conclusion in part of the conclusion the book concludes that in bisipara the lower caste of distillers and those who were below the line of purity were the main gainers of the land that shipped out of the control of the upper caste once the distiller and the outcast had acquired land they started claiming the upper caste status the process of upward mobility what in indian context is called sanskritization followed economic power how does the ethnography advance our understanding this work reflected the fact that indian village is not an isolated system it is connected to the wider world changes emanate from the relations to of a village with the outside world the earst while land owners lose their land over time land is redistributed among different caste the new land owners try to sanskritize their rituals our next heading is theoretical part of which the ethnography patronage and exploitation is an example This book brings to the centrist stage center stage of ethnography and anthropology the plights of the agricultural laborers which till then was the concern of the economist Breeman the author of this work makes use of historical and anthropological data thus opening up relationships between history and anthropology In fact this book is regarded as an important contribution to historical anthropology thank you very much